Eureka. 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 Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar of the Eureka Erasmus Plus project. And we have the pleasure here to be with, with two people that incarnate the possible better futures that can be created when, when the city build in a way that it allows for urban innovation to have space to grow. And when I talk about urban innovation right now, we're going to talk about something that is very, very important and decisive on where our futures are heading, which is technology. Technology is probably this most decisive factor right now of where our societies are going. And now that we're all scared about the AI token taking over the world and, and turning into some kind of terminator, it's important to remember that there are ethical alternatives that keep humanity in control of what's happening instead of turning humanity just into a consumer of technology. And this alternative is very linked to the concept of open source technologies, to new community spaces where skills shared and tools and expertise are shared, like the Fab Labs and Maker Spaces, like the one that we have right here in, in the old cookie factory in Bilbao, Sorosaure. And uh, uh, that is also very, very important to, to keep us digging a bit deeper in what's happening in that black box that uh, that will shape the narrative of, of where humanity is going in the next years. And we have uh, a good example of, of what happens when spaces like the one where I'm talking to, the Bilbao Old Cookie Factory in Sorosaure, which is an area in redevelopment where we, we created this grassroots space that included uh, a fab lab, uh, is open to collaboration with uh, with people that want to do the right thing and at the same time want to create uh, their own jobs and professional opportunities uh, focused on, on trying to do something that looks like their principles and values. So we have here Javier Perez Contenante, alias Japi. Japi, hello. He's talking from Madrid in his workshop. Hello. And we have... Hello, Julian. Karim. And Julian Trotman, who is talking from next door in the cookie factory from his studio, Godot. Thank you for being hello, with us. Hello, Karim. Hello, Happy. Hello, Julian. Well, I'm, we're going to do this in a in a inter interview format, and I'm going to share my screen so I can give our audience a little bit of the context and why uh, the cookie factory became this this platform for for all the amazing stuff that that you've been doing along the years. So, can you see my screen, friends? Yes. Great. That means the other <clears throat> here too. So, let's go back to the <laughs> dramatic moment that everybody remembers because it's a very good example of of the concept that we 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 refer to as distributed design. No. So, if you remember, in the first weeks of COVID, were terrible because our society kind of did not have tools to 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 defend us from this invisible enemy that basically took over the world in the snap of a finger and uh, we didn't have any other uh, solution but to stay at home like in the medieval times like when the plague but some spaces like the cookie factory and other maker spaces and fab labs these community spaces that i was telling you about uh reacted in a different way and uh, the picture that you see is uh, from one of the moments of the pandemic when from one day to the next from local to global all over the world all the maker spaces and fab lab transformed into the largest emergency equipment ppe manufacturer in the world so the nurse that you see merche by the way the same name as the printer <clears throat> was uh uh was uh, in a WhatsApp group, and eventually she heard in that group that we were giving away these new manufactured face shields that the community was open sourcing both in, in design and manufacturing. And uh, when we realized that we would have a line of doctors and, and nurses and, and professionals from the health sector that did not have materials to protect themselves from the virus, and they would come here to get 
something that could extend the life of the of the protective masks like the face shield so it's very interesting to to think that this distributed design approach uh, allowed us to go from zero units manufactured and zero designs to millions of designs in in just a few weeks how is that possible because it kind of goes against the idea that we have of how do we manufacture well it's basically it's basically something that could happen thanks to first the open source ethic of sharing because the designs that we were doing were not being uh, uh, patented and hidden in a black box but uh, shared with the community the community was improving them so the design that we started doing uh, to laser cut these face shields was immediately improved by the the other community fab labs that had laser cutters and uh, so on we started also thinking better about how to improve the design process and the manufacturing process in a way that we could scale something from zero to millions in this, in, in just a few weeks. And this is possible thanks to this concept that I told you about distributed design. So the, the network society that, that was uh, born thanks to the internet allows us to connect knowledge in communities virtually and also physically with new productive models. And the Fab Labs is kind of like the, the, the poster child of this new production revolution. It was invented by Neil Genshufil, a professor from MIT, that started it as a class called How to Make Almost Anything. Well, he would teach all the students how to use uh, avant-garde technologies and how to document and share their knowledge in a way that it could be repurposed by other people. If you think about it, it's a little bit the same as the ethical uh, uh, of, of science and this, this famous quote by Isaac Newton standing on the shoulders of, of giants exemplifies very well what happened and in the same way that the knowledge spread the number of fab labs also spread and went in just a few decades from zero to more than 1000 fab labs all over the world at the same time we also had new event uh, where people could actually uh, learn how to make stuff and how to share, which are called maker fairs. Maker fairs started in Silicon Valley about a decade and a half ago as a show and tell of all type of technology amateurs, both professionals and, uh, and uh, you could call them garage geeks, that were sharing the, their, their results but also showing you the recipe and explaining you how the technologies were made. And in one of these maker fairs around a decade ago, I met Jappy in Rome, if I remember well, right, Japs? And yeah, yeah, uh, Rome 2013 was. Yeah, it's been a while. So we're all... <laughs> and uh, so what happened uh, with the maker fair and the Fab Labs is that they started connecting a lot of tools, a lot of expertise and a lot of humans that wanted to to work together and to get inspired from each other's projects to to create new ways of 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 repurposing the technologies that we had and creating new products and new proofs of concepts so Jappy, if i remember well in one of the maker fairs entered in contact with gianluca pugliese an italian that was making large 3d printer machines mostly for plastic and uh, and Jappy also was at that point uh, obsessed with the idea that that we should skip plastic and try to use a material that that is more friendly with the environment, and that's kind of like the starting ground for for the 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 project that we call Jet Clay, right, Japs? Yeah, I mean that. I mean the video that you are showing uh, that 2017 actually it was the the year that we started Jetplay. And that Maker Fair was the first time that we took the just uh, brand new, I mean, the brand new machine that we built uh, out of the, you know, our our studio and took it to, to Maker Fair Bilbao. Yeah, so that was 2017. And yeah, first time I saw a 3D printed piece was in, in Maker Fair Madrid. Uh, Gianluca brought it. He was bringing also the the printer that we were like, you know, like 
almost waiting him, you know, like a pop star or something like, oh, yeah, okay, hello, you're Angela Luca, right? And then where is the machine? Where is the machine? And I said, fuck, guys, I'm so sorry. You know, the machine is in the customs, you know, custody and didn't go through it. So he couldn't, he couldn't get it into the, you know, into the, into the, I mean, the maker first. So yeah, I do remember uh, me and Alejandro, the the, the founders of, of Jet Clay, you know, touching the pieces, uh, talking to him, really like, I don't know, I mean, like uh, really fans and really groupies of, of that. And and after and that, make it you to... No, after that, make it fair, uh, Alex and myself, you know, decided that we, we wanted to start something that uh, I don't remember the year of this Madrid Maker Fair because I do remember that I met you in 2013 in Rome. I would say it's that... 2015, the one that happened in Media La Prado. That was also one yeah. of, uh, yeah. Of, yeah. Could be... the members of the Fab Lab yeah. Network until the, the public authority yeah. closed the space. Yeah, could, yeah, might be because uh, Rome was 2013. That, that I was, I do remember the year precisely because that was the year that I made the Fab Academy, and I was presenting my project uh, there. You know, and then, uh, yeah, it's, I always say that um, doing Fab Academy and starting to go to make a first meeting people like you, like Gianluca. I don't know, you know, like this maker community, you know, really changed, uh, you know, my professional life, but also my personal life, you know, thinking that, you know, sharing is, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, I mean, makes me feel happier, <laughs> you know, but makes me feel more connected with who I yeah. am, you know, and, uh, and yeah. Let's give more context to the audience. So, so uh, okay. you're an architect by training, and at some point yeah. you do the Fab Academy. The Fab Academy is the, the, the official training program of the Fab Labs, uh, and uh, you turn from building you know, buildings and houses to to a machine maker, no? Which is yeah, an interesting yeah, thing. I mean, uh, this yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, these uh, these skills that you had to build uh, buildings were also very useful to build machines. And uh, at some yeah. point, <laughs> you you turn this this obsession of you, Alejandro, and all the the first founders of of uh, uh, the jet clay, jet clay. Yeah. into mm -hmm. uh, into a into a concrete project, which is mm -hmm. that you do, and mm -hmm. uh, at some point you also become uh, mm. uh, an example of of open source technology. This is a, a picture of one of the workshops that that we did mm. where we were sharing the the outcomes of of the first version of the machine and it's funny because i was looking at the assistant list and there's two or three people that have been working and and you know alex from lloyd ceramics he got his own machine and now yep. he he included both traditional ceramics in his work but also digital ceramics there's a large mm -hmm. that now is a fantastic material bio designer that is exposing in the dutch design week and in several places so the 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 potential for human and project connection in spaces that these like this is pretty pretty clear once you you look back and you see how many lives have been transformed and how many human potential that was not going to be fully deployed is suddenly connected thanks to the to the the spaces that allow for it so what what are we seeing in the picture, Jappy? Explain us a little bit because you know we told yeah. that the audience probably doesn't know that much about uh, machines. Mm. Maybe explain it a little bit what we're looking at. Yeah, this is, I mean, the what we see uh, on the table that's uh, a tank um, with uh, the capacity is fifteen liters. So in two thousand eighteen. Yeah, in 2018, we with you with with uh, Spacio Open, we we got this funding. What was called Open Maker. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was somehow transition, you know, the from from maker to market, you know. So, okay, we know. I mean, we learn how to build these machines, how to use them, you know, what to do things with them. But uh, okay, this is, you know, like a hobby, you know, and then step by step is, you know. We, you wanted to, you know, to to make a life out of it, you know, to 
as you said, to create your own job, you know, to create, to make it sustainable, right? So, so yeah, that was, you know, part of this transition of from maker to market. And then we decided that we needed to develop a, a big extrusion system that by the time didn't exist at all. So you couldn't buy in the market that. So, so Alex, who is that guy who is looking at the, the machine, you know, we looked at each other and said, well, okay, you are a, an, an artist. I'm an architect. <laughs> let's let's try to you know to build uh, to build machines and to build these extrusion systems for for ceramics. So this is the really the starting point of uh, jet clay as um you know this is like the first milestone of developing developing technology. And we decided from from the very beginning that that technology needed to be open source since since everything we have learned i mean we hadn't learned in a private university you know we learned that in maker spaces in maker first in you know in this uh, i don't know institutions spaces also obviously online spaces you know that uh, you know people share the knowledge so at the end what we did just to like a chef uh, you know, I, I I I see myself more, more like a chef, let's say. You know that I look at different technologies, different things, and then we I put them together. That's it. I don't invent anything, but that's just a, it's a good selection. You know, of maybe like a DJ, it's a good selection of tracks. You know, because I do a, a good selections. I think a good selection. So <laughs> piece of technology, yeah, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Hold on, because I'm I'm struggling with my screen sharing now. So give me a second. Okay. But sure. uh, it's interesting because the next slide that we were talking about was mm -hmm. now you're looking at my inbox. Hope there's nothing <laughs> on it. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, the next slide was precisely about the open makers oh. and how yeah, the European so. Union support and and Technalia's support, which was the the local partner here for these this project mm -hmm. that we're trying to put the industry and uh, the maker movement together uh, gave Jet Clay the opportunity to kind of like grow. And uh, it was also the, the first time that you worked on the dry exclu uh, extruder. And it was also the opportunity to start building a community around <coughs> Jet Clay that could go beyond, you know, the, the first nose mm -hmm. of the yep. project. And... Uh, and from there, we immediately realized that that it was all about building the communities first, without having uh, all the the possible answers of of what we should do. Because sometimes we forget that when you are in the avant garde, it's kind of hard to see beyond the next three steps, you know, because it's not standardized uh, paths that we're trying to replicate. We're trying to open our new plants. And there's no playbook for it. So this this picture, if you remember, friends, is from from the workshop that we did in 2021, if I remember well. And uh, there's a fellow on the back, <laughs> football player, and that was the first time that Julian uh, came to the Cookie Factory. No, do you remember that, Julian? What happened during that week? I don't know. He resembles to me like a young Denzel Washington. <laughs> no, but uh wow no like uh hearing you guys um talk about all this progress from jet clay just reminds me about um how amazing it is that i now nurtured from all of that trajectory and milestones that you conquered over time right and uh, that that has allowed me to uh, step up my game and also my cultural values of giving back to the community because where I come from, yes, we share and, it, you know, we have open source, but it's not a common ground, right? But um, I can now look back and say that uh, in these last two years from 2021 that I made this uh, distributed design course on how to build this 3D printer called Merche, uh, and now I look upon today that yesterday we just finished uh, like a, a performance at the Guggenheim with the same machine. <laughs> you know, it's it's just a, an amazing thing uh, to to linger upon. No, 
-hmm. and and it's all based on this accumulation and uh, um, how can you say it and um, like stacking up of knowledge on top no uh, on top of knowledge and how people start and then we others we finish and then we contribute back and and you know just give back to the community it's it's yeah. an amazing thing that's that's very very interesting because our audience maybe is not that familiar but 3d printing technologies exist since the 80s <laughs> but it was very expensive equipment a machine like this could probably cost a million euros and uh, it was patented technologies and then when the patent perished in 2005 what happened is that the fab labs and the maker mu uh, movement and researchers from the academic world in concrete adrian boyer from from the university of bath started making open source versions of of the 3d printers machine and what happened is that it kick-started this new industrial revolution where we could send uh, digital designs from one place to the other of the world and uh, and make not only designs but also the same machines so it's interesting because what we did in 2021 was to to do a full camp of a two week learning how to build the machine and then we shared all the designs and uh, japi and irene that is on the front row made fantastic documentation that is still available in Wikifactory. And this machine that in the 80s would have costed a million euros, now you can make it yourself for 3,000 bucks plus the extrusion system. And so, so, so open source technologies create what you could call communities, and these communities then eventually can spread globally in the snap of a finger, no? So from after that workshop, and we'll go back to the... The rest of the stories like julian and how he he eventually moved to bilbao and started godot studio and now has a his own space and his own startup with his partner uh, Jul, uh, rashad salem but it's interesting Jappy, that uh, in one year jet clay went from one from one country to to five because we had a, we had a, a machine in mexico we had one in spain we had one in Germany later on with with the symbiotic spaces version of, uh, of the product and and also in Hungary, no? So Hungary, yeah. So this, this, this image images yeah. from the workshop that you give in <clears throat> in Budapest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the idea in these uh, workshops is to, I mean, it has like two purposes. It's not only about uh, technical, you know. Thing you know, it's we go there and then we we build the machine, the extruder and everything needed uh, with the participants, with assistants, and then with them who are artists, uh, designers. Uh, I mean, mainly you know we we work together. I mean, we help them to develop their their ideas, their projects. So you know, it's like a full immersive uh, thing that it's uh, could be one week or I mean, better two weeks, you know, and then it is this, you know, what you were saying about, you know, opening this black box of technology, you know, that oh, 3D printer, that's super complex or oh, extruder, oh, I don't know how it works. Um, probably after the workshops, you don't know very well how it works either, but uh, but at least you, you have assembled them and then you have, you know, like a, a glimpse of, you know what is behind all, all that uh, uh, black box. Uh, so I think it's um, it's not only about democratizing, you know, the technology. It's not only about making it cheaper, and but it's it's about making it more accessible in terms of knowledge and usage. You know, you know knowledge because then you have built your machine. You know, then maybe if you wanna, you know, these things about upgrading or. Or just fixing, you know, oh fuck, one of the belts broke, you know, and then you know, I mean, usually, I mean, they call me, hey Jabby, I mean this broke, what do I do? Okay, buy a new one. <laughs> but you know, the community is growing and then you know, so they by themselves talk to each other and then oh that happened to me. So oh you just buy it and then you you fix it by itself and then you don't need to send the machine to any of these other companies, right? So so yeah, I mean it's 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 yeah. So the idea is to build, I mean, do this, create these nodes of uh, let's say jet clay technology, 
that at the end is, I mean, it's open source community technology. And then, yeah, start uh, this, you know, like this conversation of building things with ceramics in a big size, you know, usually, I mean, right now where we did the Jet Clay Mini, uh, because that's even more accessible, you know, small, but the, the, the big, the machine, you mean? yeah, 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 the smaller one, but this is to, you know, and then making ceramics with, I mean, big size, usually, I mean, this is in Cosmo that it's a ceramics uh, space. So we have this, this, we usually work with Fab Labs maker spaces of ceramics spaces, right? And then uh, people who, who are, you know, ceramists, but they don't know anything about 3D or, you know, 3D printers, but they are curious you know, enough to, to participate. And then, you know, they, you know, they really, they really do it. They're really designed, you know, basic pieces. I mean, they're, I mean, some of the tools are online, super easy to use, and and then other people, you know, that have, have more maybe a background with in digital fabrications, things like that. You know, they have curiosity about this material, which, which is clay, right? And then, yeah, that's the starting point for this workshop. It's interesting. Do you feel represented from by this sentence? You know, we go from cultural capital to jobs creation. No, cultural capital is this concept that that is very linked to spaces like the cookie factory. So right now, cities can only be consumed from a catalog of already start, uh, standardized uh, solutions. No, You can go to the mall, you can go to the movies, you can go have a drink, you can go dance to the club. But the problem is, what if there's more to life, both professionally and in a leisure way? Well, the problem is that you need a place that people can enter and they need a space where they can actually formulate these new proposals that, you know, that are these cultural capital. We need to create more cultural capital, you know, if you want to use the capitalistic analogy. And then that capital can eventually turn into an <laughs> art project, into a social innovation that will change the world. But it can also turn into a job or it can turn into something that combines all of them. You know, because if you think about it, Godot Studio, it's both an art, a social innovation and an entrepreneurship program at the same time. Julian, what do we see in the picture? Well, uh, right there, what you can see is our headquarters of Godot Studio. Um, it's a picture where we have, um, I think we had mounted that for the Bilbao Vizcaya Design Week of 2022. And we had like some artwork that we had worked on um and develop for a client and and well not a, a client a um a collaborator Hello. right uh, called sarai perez uh that came with us uh came to us with an idea of <laughs> of doing the the um, um like these two columns that resemble like that she had like 3d scannings from the routes of the the migratory migratory routes of the, uh, of the Mediterranean, including uh, uh, common graveyards, uh, uh, different pieces of boats, different trash, everything that the ocean threw back to land. Uh, um, she 3D scanned it and she wanted to make like this proposal of saying, this cannot be happening, this like uh, complete, um, um, how, how, my English is terrible tragedy. today. Yeah, yeah, like this tragedy, <laughs> this tragedy, like, and, and she wanted mm. to to oppose to it through this art piece. So she contacted us, and we helped her in the journey of the digital fabrication process of fixing those meshes that she, she had three uh, D scanned and uh, manufacturing these two columns that are three D printed in clay, and they are two uh, two meters 50 of height one of them and the other one is like two meters mm -hmm. and it was a beautiful and, project uh, that we got to exhibit and you can see the the, the some of the objects that the, the, that the 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 migrants that died going from africa to europe uh, yes and in embedded in the columns kind of like uh, you know, so like so the, tumors, you know, it's their tumors, and 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 like what she's trying to 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 say here is and resemble the hypocrisy of a system 
towards the abandonment of these souls in the Mediterranean Sea, right? Uh, so the two classical Roman pillars or columns that we have there stand for our society, the values that we say we stand upon, the democracy, blah, blah, blah. And then these things that pop out just uh, resembling tumors is the abandonment of these souls. You know? So it, it was a beautiful project to work on. And um, that was born here in the cookie factory um, in Bilbao in 2021. Yes. And and then Godot kind of, because uh, it's interesting because from 2021 to 2022, you went from just being a student at the workshop to be a full entrepreneur with a fully working workshop and a partner and project yes. with artists and other institutions in one year. Yes. Yeah, it's been an amazing journey, I have to say. Um, it is true when 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 I learned about the 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 course of three D printing and building this three D printer in Bilbao, I had already uh, uh, started Godot with Rashad. Like we were printing, but we were in back end. We were playing with algorithms and trying to define our designs, and we had only four designs that you can see on the table back there, right? And there were four bases, and we were super proud, the pictures, the everything. And as soon as I hit Bilbao and we started doing the machine, I was like, oh my God, like, I need to do a 180 degree turn and start following this path, uh, surrounded by a community that actually supports everything that we're doing and understands the values of growing knowledge through sharing it. Right. And um, what we, in, in, in small words, what we could say is I founded culture and uh, and that was a, a key element for the professional development that came uh, afterwards. Right. Uh, because community was directly proportional to the success that we've had uh, without the community it would have not been the same. Yeah. That's for sure. And and it's funny because communities need a place where to meet. So that's <laughs> to eat. These and, and, industrial yeah. ruins of post-industrial society turn into our cathedrals. You know. Yes. Kind yes, of like and not only that, but the, it, it gives you also the freedom. Um, we are legal companies, and we are all doing the legal path, and we do things correctly. You know, we pay our taxes. We, when we can, we hire the people. We like we're doing it the right way. And it's funny how we feel secure in in the most abandoned places away <laughs> from the city. You know? And still we are legal, we're doing everything, but we don't have the same services as the rest of the people, right? Well, actually, and, uh, we, don't, we don't have heating, you know? We're... Yeah, we don't have heating and right now it's like, oh my God. So, um, but yeah, these places give us life and also allow us to to push it to the limit constantly. You know? and, and it's an amazing feeling. It's funny because one one can imagine uh, a future where the cookie factory would have been just another crappy museum. Not saying that all museums are crappy, but they're standardized material. Museums were probably something very revolutionary in the 19th century, but now it's just another mall where you go consume something. And we need spaces where people can make things instead of consuming them. And you are the perfect example of that, friends. And uh, I'm going to, because we've been talking for a while, and uh, I'm just going to show two concrete projects that that came from, from, from the Jet Clay ecosystem. Uh, one of them is more uh, emotional. And, uh, and this is from the, the news. We made it to the news. The, like a, a week ago, where what we were doing is is scanning some of the neighbors of the Sorosauria area. Sorosauria, as you know, uh, is a, a place that uh, that is in in heavy de redevelopment, and uh, some sometimes these mem these uh, these procedures are 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 kind of like a tabula rasa and they completely change everything and they make us forget who we are and in a, in an exercise of honoring the 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 neighbors and the people that made this barrio we we 3d scan them 
and now we're going to make a wall with all their faces, no? Chamorro, the, the person that you see here, he was in charge of the maintenance of the building for decades. Chamorro was actually one of our main allies when we started the project of Espacio Open a decade and a half ago. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have made it alive because it's very, very complicated to reform these spaces and make them safe for people. And it was thanks to Chamorro that we learned all the, you know, I learned to use heavy equipment thanks to him. And so, so it, 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 it was a beautiful moment to see to see Chamorro not only scanned and 3D printed, but also he got really emotional. And uh, you're gonna see it now. He almost cried on on, on the Basque television. But it's interesting, <laughs> you know, trying to 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 see, you know, because we talk also about KPIs, impact, and it's important to create jobs. And it's important to to create innovations, but what's important also is to to honor the people that were behind uh, before us and to create this sense of passing out the torch from generation to generation. So this project, the the memory wall that we're gonna do, is uh, is still ongoing. We're gonna keep doing this with Godot and Jet Clay in the next months, and hopefully we'll take this idea to other places in the world in the next months as well. Tell us what we're talking now. What do we see on the screen? Wow. This, this is this another building. It's, you know. This is another <laughs> building. Um, <laughs> yesterday, yesterday we, we had uh, the privilege and the great opportunity to, to uh, present a proposal that we developed. Uh, my partner and I, my emotional partner, which is Sara Arevalo Serrano from the National Ballet of Spain. Um, which it, it was well it's it's very funny because yesterday we were sitting down and it was like hey it was our first time uh, performing together you no know? after 10 years of being together we finally did something that mixed this technological world and her uh, art uh, scene which is dance you no know? and we we presented ritmo which is a uh, a performance, um, as you know, 3D printers, we can control them digitally. We can do a lot of things. But what mm -hmm. happens when we can actually translate rhythm and uh, percussion towards the piece that is printing? So the pattern comes from an analog uh, aspect. And not only that, but it's registering the emotion. And, and the dancer is now not only a dancer, but a sculpture. Uh, no, the, well, the, it's let me explain it a bit. It's sculpting a bit, a bit, a, a right? bit to the audience. So the, the printer kind of layers by layers reproduce the path that was a cylinder path, and then the vibrations of life through the the movements of the dancer it make the the piece move, and those vibrations are encapsulated in the piece that you see on the picture on the left. And the building, by the way, you didn't say it, Julian, the building with heating is the Guggenheim Museum. Which you could say <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, if we are the, the Omega, they are the Alpha. And yes. uh, I like, I like uh, you know, having a world-class museum in our city. But it's also interesting to see, uh, uh, you know, this, this contrast between the avant-garde and the mainstream institutions kind of finding ways to collaborate more and more in a fair and and distributed way, and uh, I'm very proud of 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 you guys taking taking over the Guggenheim Atrium and and doing this piece, and hopefully this will be the first of many uh, uh, of many performances because one of the things that I really like about this piece is that this robot is not a, a robot that was made in Germany or in China and then shipped here. This robot was born here in the cookie factory. It's, you could say it's, it's a working class robot. And uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it, it connects also with what I was telling you at the beginning about how technology is becoming more and more decisive. And, uh, and uh, you know, the Terminator medium with AI is becoming uh, an increasing part of the public debate about uh, what the future is holding. And I, I defend the idea that there are good robots. Any robot where you can read the code, any robot that can be replicated by somebody who needs it in another place in the world, any robots that is open source is a good robot for me. And uh, 
it's nice to put science, art, and technology in 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 the same collaboration path because it allows us to connect in a way so that it takes us to these places where innovation actually happens because people f forget sometimes that innovation cannot be planified. You can you can nurture it, you can create ecosystems where these unlikely connections happen. And this takes us to, to the last project that we're gonna talk about, which is elementary cooling. And uh, the video is so cool that I think our audience should just hear it for a few minutes and then we talk about it, okay? I can't hear it, so I guess their audience can't hear it either. Elementary cooling, DC uses. Can't you hear it? Now, yes. There was a moment that yes, but uh, yeah, it, 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 I think it's coming with a delay. Let's start over again. But share, uh, Karim, share the. Don't share the screen, but share the the application that is playing. And fire. Yeah. <laughs> the way we cook. Okay, these are you live. Know. <laughs> Sorry for the audience, but we'll that way. It. Yeah. So can you can you see the the video? Or yeah, yeah. The video, the vis. Yeah, I so. we can't see it, but the the audio thing is the it's uh, is delayed, as Julian said. So if you share, don't share the full screen. You know, Karim Azri's screen, but share the. Uh, how are you playing it? You are playing it with yeah. Share that application. Oh, good thing we have a professional of screen share. <laughs> So you say let's, that let's go to screen, yeah. share. screen share and then you can choose the application, the app, the window app, not yeah. the full screen. Hold on. And and that Close uh, to meeting. <laughs> would 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 synchronize both audio and are you sure about video. that? Yeah. Okay. So let me But don't it. but don't close the, the, the app that plays the video. Leave it. Yeah, but hold no. on. Let me, so what I need to do first is, and uh, in the meantime, you can tell us a little bit about the, the project. Yeah, if, sure. And yeah, uh, I mean, second. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the mentoring cooling is, um, I think it's, I mean, talking, I mean, it, I mean, this, this interview has been like, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, looking backwards, right? What we have done, you know, different steps and blah, blah and make uh, really make a lot of sense at least for us the thing that we are doing right now with elementary cooling right so we started you know making our you know getting into with the, into contact with this maker movement you know sharing knowledge building our own machines you know then with those machines you know we went from from maker to market then you know we create our own jobs we do our you know we got sustainable somehow, you know, but then, you know, also this, you know, the thing is that this, that's, it's what I was saying before, it's not, doing this path is not that, it's not only having access to cheap technology, it's that you have easy, I mean, easier access to innovation, right? Because then you break a lot of barriers, you, you have, you know, then, I mean, you can develop and innovate much, easier you know that's that's democratized let's say yeah, so yeah. yeah so maybe maybe that's a good introduction for them <laughs> and then you can play the video oh, give me uh, a second. Oh, okay and then so there the, uh, and it also you know has this idea of standing in the shoulder of giants because this project also is trying to merge the avant-garde of digital fabrication with ancient techniques that we've used since we were since our ancestors started playing with, mm. yeah, I mean, one of this one, <clears throat> I mean, in 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 jet clay, we, you know, we there was a moment that we said, okay, I mean, we are designers, you know, architects, designers. So, what can we do with this that we have, right? In terms of products, you know, something, let's say, yeah, products that you can use to do to get something, you know, to solve a problem that you know we think it's important. You know, in this case. Uh, it's about cooling our spaces, but it's looking at the, you know, the, I mean, ceramics, ceramics is the, I mean, the first material mat, you know, it's the first material that, 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 that uh, as human beings, you, you know, we shaped. So we have been using that for thousands and thousands of years, right? 
and the, it is this idea of looking uh, backwards, looking at this uh, knowledge, you know, that wisdom, and see if that if it makes sense to, you know, rethink it and 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 uh, what is the role of three D printing, right? Is the role of three D printing has any, you know, any meaningful, you know, thing to say to that? So and that's and that's what we're doing with elementary cooling. It's uh, using ceramics to cool. Uh, our spaces you know it's it's an alternative to air conditioning so i mean uh, i mean that's the um, just using you know ceramics uh, water and and air right uh, so let's see and just when you finish talking now you hear it no well then Julian? well then it's okay we can we can explain it's okay it's but basically, elementary PC cooling uses earth, uses water. earth, water. Ah, oh, no, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. leave it. Now we do this by providing a low-tech alternative to standard air conditioning. We want to address the concerns of energy consumption, climate change, and indoor air quality with an efficient and cost-effective cooling solution that is based on a combination of cutting-edge digital fabrication and ancient techniques we've used for thousands of years. Elementary cooling builds upon the R&D that Lucas Munoz designed and implemented in the restaurant Mode Movimiento 2020. Six massive water-based air refrigerating clay bases work on the climate comfort in this amazing space. Awarded last year for best use of material and most sustainable interior development in the world by both Frame and Diesel magazines. Spacio Open has brought together experts in sustainability, 3D printed clay, Water filtering, automation, clay extraction, R&D, and production for this adventure. Introducing the 3D printing technology, we aim to increase the performance of the cooling and filtering systems. And as the backbone of the process is digital, it can be locally sourced and manufactured following the principles of distributed design. Check out the rest of our world-class team. Jet Clay and its custom machines for ceramic 3D printing Brings to the table expertise on manufacturing, design, and digitally fabricated air purification system with plant based filtering solutions. Pioneers of the 3D printing clay technology unfold have a decade of experience in ceramics and robotics. Their research on 3D printed clay water filtering systems is also a cornerstone of this event. A more than 100 year family company with expertise in clay sourcing, Clay Mineral Hungary, is a dedicated player in the field of material science with a keen focus on the use of a variety of clay and mineral resources. And our industrial advisory board is formed by David Cuartieles, co-founder of the electronics company Arduino, and Keith Bradford, ex-researcher at MIT Media Lab, an expert in developing 21st century cooling systems with a strong background in consumer electronics. Air consciousness can only be achieved if we find alternatives to the existing power-hungry air conditioning systems that cool down our living rooms at the cost of heating up the planet. We need products and habits that put us back in the circle of harmony with nature and the environment. So let's go back to the basics. Earth, wind, fire, and water. Let's mix them together with the possibilities of digital fabrication. And let's tell the world there is a better way. Elementary cooling, from air conditioning to air consciousness. Is there a better way, friends? I think there is. And... Uh, mm. We cannot share all the good news yet, but hopefully uh, when you read the video, when you see this video and this webinar, you you can Google elementary cooling and, and, and you can read about this project that we're going to go full in and we're going to put all our hearts and our brain power into it so that we can change the world with one of these meaningful innovations and tackle the problem of of climate change that has this vicious circle that nobody has solved yet because as our homes get hotter and hotter we use more the ac and then we just increase more the temperature this ever-ending loop has to be broken by by new approaches to ancient wisdom that combine both the potential of digital fabrication with the common sense that our ancestors has built for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. and I just want to, well, if you have something more to say about the project, now is a good moment. But if not, we, we're a little bit over time. I just wanted you to 
to to thank you and and to ask you to to close imagining what would you like the cookie factory uh to be 100 years from now when we're all under the ground um you know i think the what happens in these spaces you know you 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 started the conversation talking about the city you know what the city is right and then I think we over design things, right? So we don't leave a space for the uncertainty. You know, this something that is, oh, there is too, I mean, there's too much uncertainty, right? Nowadays, that's for sure. But uh, I think we we over design things, we overthink things. So these spaces like the cookie factory, they're at somehow half abandoned, half alive, you know, in the middle of things, you know, the middle of transformations, you know, so actually there is a lot of, uncertainty so there is a lot of lack of design spaces you know and i think that's really needed for innovation for really leaving people to build and to design you know this like sort of a sort of infrastructure that it's that it's good enough to you know to live in and leave a space to create because to create you need space <laughs> space not only physical space but you need space right so and then i think that's i just wanted to say that so a hundred years ago, you know, that this cookie, old cookie factory is one of, you know, half abandoned, half in the middle of several things, but uh, not over designed, not overthink, uh, left the space to people make their things, you know. Yeah. That's, that's a good advice coming from an... <laughs> for, really? me, for me, for me, it would be, um, I would like, I, I would like for it to become an epicenter for urban art, technological, and creative uh, development. You know, I think, um, of course, we uh, like our proposal from Godot Studio wasn't the first one to come in, and I hope it's it, it won't be the last to join this amazing uh, ecosystem. Uh, and for it to be an ecosystem, it needs of more proposals so uh, i hope that uh, exactly that you know that uh, it does not lose uh, uh, that that we don't give in to over designing and overthinking what has to because that's going to limit what actually happens here organically and for creative minds and creative studios and every uh, uh, creative industry that comes here to have the space, as Happy said, to to mm -hmm. actually explore and develop. So hopefully, in a hundred years, it's an example of what industrial creative epicenters have to be, mm -hmm. to in order to develop actual uh, uh, networking and actual companies and trajectories on a professional level. So. Hopefully, it's that an example and an epicenter of what a model to, of what to be and how to do it. Well, it's funny because the transition between the uh, the medieval times and the Renaissance also had these these new spaces that were that were you know at the at the fringes, at the borders, at the liminal spaces between the the over designed or over planified, I would say, and the, and the new ideas that can tackle the uncertainties and the challenges that we have. I thank you for your service, generals, and I thank you also for your time here and sharing your story. And uh, so Jet Clay and Godot Studio have their own websites that you can follow their progress and uh, the, the story of, of the urban innovation practice and the community that, that did the heavy lifting around it is still yet to be written and mm -hmm. hopefully it still has the best years ahead here or in other places because I always say that what's important is not to defend the building and just have another crappy museum with a chimney and two machines that nobody will use as an archaeology but places that are alive and that give life more life so Jappy, Julian, thank you. Thank you, everybody thank who, you so much. Who, who listened for everything. And uh, let's be more radical about the future of our cities and let's let's make the case for 
for spaces that can allow amazing projects like the ones that you've developed uh, happen more often and in a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Karim. Thank you, Karim. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. Eureka! 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 Eureka!